The uh, gentleman from Texas for five minutes, Mr. McCall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank the witnesses for being here. Mr. Costner, uh, thank you for your leadership and your um, role in this uh, response effort. I know you testified before Science and Technology Committee previously, uh, so we had a chance to visit at that time. Um, it's really an astounding story that the two of you have to tell here today about the federal government, and sometimes the federal government is its own worst enemy. Um, this technology, Mr. Costner, as you mentioned in your report, was developed uh, over 30 years ago by scientists at the Idaho National Lab. Uh, the patent was applied for in 1990. You purchased it in 93. Uh, for 15 years, you tried to get the federal government to take notice of this technology to pre pre prevent the very disaster we saw happen in the uh, Deep Horizon spill. And I think the chairman has already gone through your testimony in terms of who you contacted trying to get the attention. But even uh, after the spill occurred, uh, what's even more incredible to me is, is the lack of interest or lack of response by the federal government. Can you tell me a little bit about the obstacles and the challenges you encountered even after the spill trying to get the attention of the Department of Homeland Security? Well, um you know, I'm not so frustrated. I mean, you have to understand that I don't know these waters myself, how to navigate um, in government. I'm a citizen. I think most of the people behind me, uh, well, maybe not. Um, th this is an interesting place to, to work. And so I try to educate myself. I, I've never tried to lean on my celebrity to bring attention to this. I always thought that the technology would speak for itself, um, but it hasn't. And listen, America's story is pretty long in all things in all things that, w w that we've accomplished. And maybe we've come to a seminal point where we can, we can put our thumb down, we can put our fist down and say, this is what we're, we need to be about. So, you know, I feel uh, uh, privileged that we, I have this audience. I feel like this group has the weight, has the interest of the American people at heart and could influence the oil industries to take this plan. As you can see, my emphasis has kind of shifted. I've gone from technology that I was willing to offer up a machine that would create efficiencies on the water where no efficiencies ha uh, existed. And we've moved, my experience down in the Gulf the last five months has led me to bring forth a plan. And I, I want to be really clear about this plan. This plan was not made by myself. It was made up of locals who have experience, considerable experience, both nationally and internationally. It's made up by men who have made their own companies in the oil service business who have really made a thoughtful plan that we believe is overwhelming in its ability to respond to oil spills, big and small. And I think it's the role of this uh, uh, committee, Mr. Chairman, to get your plan, uh, get attention to your plan and get the, the Department of Homeland Security to consider this plan and the federal government. Um, Eventually, BP did end up buying some of your machines. Is that correct? That is correct. And, and how many did they? They bought 32. Okay. And 21 of them were deployed. Okay. And, and they worked uh, they worked They worked very well, but, um, you know, pointing out to the frustration that, that, um, that everyone has experienced, uh, there was times when our machines sat out there waiting for oil to be brought to them from these 6,000 boats. It never came. Mm -hmm. There was no logistics that could direct these boats to where this oil could be offloaded and they could continue to gather more. Yeah. So... Um, why my plan is simple is because it needs to be simple. We need to have one in place. It needs to be mobile. It needs to be very robust, but it needs to be passed off. And the only, th only plan that can be passed off is one that's been uh, carefully thought out where training has followed suit, and it can pass over to the Coast Guard. We need to simplify this, and we can do it. Because um, my time is running out, 190 vessels with 190 of these machines? Well, no, there would be multiple machines sitting on these boats to process this oil. Okay. I'd be interested to get the cost for that uh, plan. If, I know you don't have that figure. I've had to, well, I've had to do estimates because I think mm -hmm. that's important. There's a price tag with everything. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to know that as we design this plan, we didn't just act like we had a blank check and throw it at the oil industry. We're not, I don't want to be that cavalier. What we decided to do was take existing assets, and of these 190 boats, 90 of them already exist. What we, what we have proposed is to retrofit them. So in a way, we're not trying to stuff a bitter pill down them. We're trying to use existing assets. 
The 100 shallow water boats were something that we don't have, and we are too accustomed to seeing our own citizens on the beach standing heroically with rubber boots and pitchforks and hay. These shallow water boats, as I described, can move in a very rapid mobile place. They can move from Texas to Florida overnight. And so finally we can have some highly technical pieces of equipment working as oil moves its way towards our shore should it get by this plan. In the limited time, just one question, Mr. Tafaro. Um, you testified that the Pierce interaction with DHS was non-existent. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, the, the link between myself uh, as, the, as the parish representative and DHS occurred through the Coast Guard's uh, PPLO, or the liaison officer supplied by the Coast Guard. So you did not have a seat at the Unified Command? We had a branch, our branch in St. Bernard, mm -hmm. Uh, so there was no DHS direct interaction. Uh, and I, what I wanted to add to that, if I can quickly, is that, is that the characterization here is that every individual who came to assist, whether they were rotating in or rotating out, had a clear, a clear dedication to the mission, but the system that they operated in did not provide them the, the appropriate support to carry the, the message from the highest levels of, of authority to the ground level. In, in, um, in just closing, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you, you testified, Mr. Tafaro, about legislation needed uh, to have more flexible response decisions to be made. And I think we should take a look at that on this committee. And thank you for the testimony. Thank you.